This video will demonstrate how to determine a limiting reagent given a balanced reaction and a starting mass of your reactants. Limiting reagent problems require you to have an understanding of how to do mole to mass conversions as well as mass to mole conversions. Uh, because this is a baseline assumption of how to perform these problems correctly, I will not be going through all of the steps in that part and simply writing out the answers. So we have starting masses and our moles to start with are 3.13 moles and 2.77 moles. The next step in a limiting reagent problem is determining which of these quantities represents the number of moles that will get used up completely. And in doing so, we can then determine the number of moles of the excess reagent that will be used. So, in order to test that, we'll take our first one. So, we are going to test the lithium hydroxide, and then we will test the calcium sulfide. So in order to do this, we form a ratio that is based on the mole ratio in our balanced reaction. And we're going to compare that against the actual numbers of moles we have. So in this case, the value x will tell us how many moles of calcium sulfide are necessary to completely use up all 3.13 moles of lithium hydroxide. And it turns out that when we multiply through uh, cross multiplication and solving for x, that we have a value of 1.57 moles of calcium sulfide. We can use the same mole ratio from the balanced reaction to determine how many moles of lithium hydroxide we'll need to completely use up 2.77 moles of calcium sulfide. And so when we cross multiply here and solve for x, we find that we will need 5.54 moles of lithium hydroxide. So this is the thinking step because now we have to look at how much we need to use everything up and compare against what we have. 5.54 moles of lithium hydroxide is more than what we actually have. So this test shows that calcium sulfide cannot be uh, used up completely because this describes a situation that is not possible. We also can tell by looking that if we need 1.57 moles of calcium sulfide to completely use up the lithium hydroxide, that is possible because this is more than this. So in that case, this is possible. And so because we've found what's possible, we can erase the failed test and copy this information over into our table. So we now know that we are going to use all of the lithium hydroxide and we know how much of the calcium sulfide we will be using. That should be negative. So the signs on the reactants are going to be negative because we're consuming them in making the products. And for those same reasons, the signs on our products will be positive. And so in order to do that, we have to determine, using again the mole ratios, uh, what the change is for the lithium sulfide, as well as what 
the changes for our calcium hydroxide. And we can use small ratios. Now, in this case, we have choices on how we want to solve this. Uh, I can look at the balanced reaction and recognize that I have a one-to-one -one ratio. One mole of calcium sulfide will be in a one-to-one -one ratio with this one mole of lithium sulfide. This one mole of calcium sulfide is also in a one-to-one -one ratio with this one mole of calcium hydroxide. And so having all of these ones will make life a lot easier. Because now that I know I'm using 1.57 moles of the calcium sulfide, I can place this into my ratio and I can use the same information for the calcium hydroxide. And so in both of these cases I'm going to get 1.57 moles of each product. And so because of this, I can fill in this information as well. Recognizing that I am creating product, so I have a positive change in moles. And now I can move on to the next step, which is determining how many moles I have at the end. So this will come out to exactly zero moles, which corresponds to lithium hydroxide being the limiting reagent. I do the subtraction here and I end up with 1.20 moles of the calcium sulfide and because we had no products to start with I simply bring down the amount of the change for these remaining two. And so uh, the final step is to determine how much mass you have at the end and because this is again a mole to mass conversion I'm not going to step through all the fine details of it. Uh, what I will do is write out what the answers should be and leave these unit conversions as an exercise for the viewer. What I will tell you is that because of conservation of mass, the only difference in the total mass at the start and the total mass at the end should be uh, due to just some round off errors. And so in this case, uh, we start with 275 grams and you should end with 275 grams. In this case, round off error didn't matter quite so much. So now you've seen a limiting reagent problem work start to finish when we begin with a balanced reaction and a starting amount of masses.